This week on the show, we are featuring Orange Citrine, Eight Jokes, Chocolate Opal 4 Under the Microscope Cab, Crackers on Why'd I Buy That, another episode of Who's Talking About Me Now, one minute of live chess, a live interview with the Whitfield Report, and Greatness Levels Over 9,000! What do you call a foot-long seafood sandwich? A submarine. Let's start the show. Cheers, Michigan native. Notice how the gem is orange on one side and rather clear on the other side. There's not a lot of orange in this and we're going to lose most of it by the end of it. But it kept a little and it's a really big gem, which means I'm going to be sending Christian Blatt a really big gem. And he needs a really big one for the collection. Because the gem collection isn't complete, complete, and my mouth isn't complete unless I'm talking about a complete collection of gemstones that has a big clear one. So cheers to clear gems and to Michigan native. Hope you're having a great week. Cheers, DOA, cowboy. I see you have arrived. I hope you're not DO yet. Or D yet, because you are O you are OA. And uh that's alright if you're DOA. Because this is the show where we will make you uh R from the DOA. Ra ra yeah, raised from the dead. Raised for R T F L M A O. And yeah, I did kind of run those together because I can't spell all those letters together. I always read that backwards. You know, I have the dyslexica. And it, it comes out as Lamo. It's like, wait, who, who are you calling a lame-o? I know that joke was bad, but come on now. Oh, you're laughing, and it's burning calories. I get it. We're uh, prepared to give you somewhat of a show this evening. Feel like it? Laughing Out Loud Day. Three of no smoking for my job. Oh, man, I got a couple of jokes for you, too. Yep. And we're going to talk to the Whitfield Report about driverless cars. We're going to ask him some deep questions and get to know him a little bit by talking about pizza. Let's fire up the chatbot, shall we? 
Okay, there we go. And Sam, I think the chatbot actually handles Streamlabs. But, nope, wait a minute. I would probably have to run that through the actual OBS, right? Something like that. Hold on, let me get this fixed. Wait, what was I pointing out there? I was pointing out something. Was I pointing out the deflection? No, I wasn't pointing anything out. I was drawing with the aluminum pencil. Drawing a line. With my homemade aluminum pencil. Just took an aluminum rod, sharpened it up. Draws great lines on the stone. And watch it happen. It's beautiful. It just goes skirk, and you got a little line there. Could almost do it for, for you know art purposes and then clear coat it. A little shellac on there. Sammy, I wanted to get this uh, this gem out of the way, and I'll, I'll tell you why. There's there. I was thinking about going with something blue, but uh, actually, I wanted to get this gem on the show so I can one send it to Christian Blatt so that he can be the one holding it in front of the webcam. Bling, 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 bling. I need to polish it more. Didn't give it enough final polish. But I think it's a pretty neat, you know, Gemini gem. It's more like a bell, isn't it? I keep holding it like an arrow, but it's more like ding dong, ding dong. The gem is here. But then the other reason I wanted to put it on is because, you know, you're a fan of the Vlad cast, and so am I, and... This is going to Christian for his interview. And uh, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to finish a blue one on time. I might have a blue one in the till. I don't remember, though, exactly. I could never exactly remember if I have a blue one complete or not. I know I got a couple of them halfway there. But I like to be able to show the crystal from the state I bought it in to the end. And unfortunately, this piece of citrine I cut... Mm, maybe two years ago, maybe three years ago. It's hard to say, really. I uh, I started with a different one, one that was still in the rough form that I got it in. But I dropped it, and it kind of flung across the way. And I haven't found it yet. So we're keeping an eye out for that one. We may come back to it. We'll probably see it sometime. But the idea is that uh, we we got to get this one featured, and uh, so that way I can send it out. And and you know, since you're a fan, it also fits. But then I didn't know if I was gonna be able to get one done, and so I have an idea of something. But I need to talk to you about gems in general. You're gonna be on the Gemstone Show. I'm actually trying to rebrand a little bit to try and increase my SEO. Search engine optimization. Props to you. I could never have the patience to do that so accurate. DOA Cowboy, that's one of the reasons that it, it takes so long to do a gem. Because let's say that I could spend 20 minutes doing a gem. If it works out and everything's lined up, great. Spend another 20, 30 minutes, you know, sitting here polishing it up and we got it done. Which is what I need to do with this one. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work, and my fingers get tired. So I can't just sit there and keep doing it, because then my accuracy goes down. Actually, I have to take a break and come back to it. So that's where I'll, I'll do like four and five stones at once, because I can get them generally there, and then just kind of focus on finishing one out at the beginning of my cut session. The problem then is I wind up with stones that are half cut two years later that I haven't finished. Sort of like this one. 
but I wanted, like I say, I wanted to send Christian something big and clear and, and you know, gaudy and cocktail ring sized or larger. You know, at least five carats. And, uh, the first one went flying, and so I grabbed this one because it was going to work out. And it, uh, it did. I mean, there, you know, you can still kind of see roughly what I started with and where we're going with it, working the flaws out. Stony Baker made it to the show. I did not say that. I said it because the reason Stony Baker met Deborah did to the show on purpose. Good old brain working for you. Go go gadget brain. No worries. Well, sometimes there are worries because you know worrying. It's it's it, it gives you something to do. How's that? How's that go? Worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but you never get anywhere. Which means you're not going anywhere. Which is what you're supposed to be doing, right? Actually, uh, we're gonna talk. Wait, what am I missing? Banded bandage opener to grasp your stones uh yeah you could use the bandage opener to grasp so on average how long does it take to do one stone doa that's been a really difficult question because doing the stone probably takes 45 minutes I mean, you can see me do it on the show here when I sit there and finish polishing it. That's, you know, most of it. And sometimes there's parts of it that I don't show on the show. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of fast faceter footage that I didn't really think was uh, necessary. But, you know, I, I cut it out so that I'm not filling my phone with junk footage. I try to keep the, the footage a little... I, I really wish I had somebody to, like, focus in and focus out and do all the panning work but it's kind of hard to do a lot of that especially with the gloves that are wet and then the phone doesn't respond welcome to one man productions but uh whatever i was talking about yeah getting a stone done uh, the the hardest part about it doa is trying to decide i mean there's like if you look at the beginning of the video where I use that aluminum pencil, trying to decide to actually cut that off or maybe cut off a different spot or turn the gem, that's usually one of the hardest parts, trying to figure out how I'm going to get the most artistic gem out of it. I mean, it gets a little simpler if you're going to the standard heirloom cuts and you're just cutting brilliants and trillions and such. And then you can usually pretty much just computer analyze it. But when you're going for a, a, an eccentric cut like I'm going for, it, it takes a little while to decide. So, it can, you know, it could take anywhere from hours to a few weeks or a couple of years <laughs> in the point of this one. Bandage opener to grasp some of them. Stony, it's too rubbery. <clears throat> not rubbery, but like uh, jiggly. That's not the right word. But I do like the word jiggly. It's a, it should, we should put jiggling on the joke list. That's one of the where it's going on the joke list of joke words. What are we at? Fooey, dunce, fanny, bing bong, walla walla, booty, nanny, and uh, whatever whatever I just said is uh, jiggly. Jiggly. <clears throat> Putting jiggly on the funny words list. That's the funny words list. We're building out the funny words list. I'm starting to write them down so that we have a list. One of these days, I'm just going to take this list of funny words. I'm going to start reading off these words. I'm just going to read words and you'll laugh. Because they're funny words, right? That's the idea. We're going to make that happen. This isn't Stars Wars, Chuck. You're right. But that does kind of look like a Star Wars ship. Actually, funny thing, Chuck... This is part of a, a pack. It's a gemstone pack for Christian Blatt for being on the show. <clears throat> and uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming by. Hashtag Trendy Club in the chats. And uh, this is actually a little bit more of a Star Wars-y shaped gem that we're going to send to him. Yep. 
that's part of the gemstone pack we're going to send to Christian. Which reminds me, we should get this uh, microscope portion going so we can get Sammy up here on the interview <clears throat> portion. I am really excited for that. I'm like, why am I waiting to get Sam on the, the thing? <clears throat> it's because my camera and my microphone won't work and all that. <clears throat> but the microscope cam will work sometimes if I try. All right, Jinnad Korzenko, how's it going? Do it to that stone 45 minutes straight. Oh, dude, I got it. Got a couple more videos. Are we sawing it next? No, that's the chocolate opal. All right, I think the next thing I did was glue it onto the dop. So here it is on the dop, getting ready for the faceter. We're going to facet it up for you, baby. Let's get that microscope cam going. Give you a little bit of close-up action. And open a new window. I didn't screw it up this time. All right. We may actually get to this interview yet, Sam. This will be fun. More fun than the joke portion. Pretty low bar. Oh, oh, I gotta turn it on. Ah ha ha! You know, all that kind of stuff. Gem twenty-two side by side in progress. Okay, we gotta pull the cap off though. That'll help. Usually that'll help. Uh, let's see. Shoo. There we go. Sam beat me up. Aw. Okay, where are we where are we at? Microscope portion. Okay. There we go. Buds and Hazards made it. Alright. How's it going, Buds? Good to see ya. Rocks and eight pound snowballs are almost gone. Eight pound snowballs are almost, I am just way lost in the chats. Way lost. Lost times thousand. Oh, Stony, feel free, man. You can polish your brain. We'll polish some gems. I'll try and focus on them so that we can actually see them. So cheese bar. All right, come on, dude. See if you can focus down on that. Yep, it's backwards again. Gotta stop doing that backwardsness. That's why I keep screwing it up, isn't it? Because I keep going backwards. There we go. Yeah, now you can see a little bit of the facet work. There is still one flaw in the bottom. I kind of like it. It it it. it shows that it's a natural gem. There's a lot of flakes from the little, little black things from that fuzzy thing. I shouldn't have put it in there first. Then I had to do these at, I think, oh man, I think it was 15 degrees off the table. Because I had that really bad notch in the back. And then this one I wound up doing at like 25 degrees. The same as this. Because we were really running out of time and I needed to get the gem ready. These are at 45 degrees, the big ones on the side. And then these are, are just meant to help try and get rid of some of the scratches and stuff. It looks like I got a chip. Or maybe that's uh, glue. Is that glue? Oh, it is. Good. Yeah, that's that's adhesive from the uh, from the top. So when I polish that, that'll come off of there. Great. I was worried that's a chip. Yeah. So when I put a little bit more of the final polish on there, that'll really help. But the idea was to get these main facets in at 45 degrees. If I'd have cut it like that, I might have got a little bit more of an orange cut. But I'm gonna have to cut a lot of the bottom out of it. I wanted something big and wide and open. And that's how we get the light to flare out on those. Uh, there we go. Um, am I dropping it? Okay. It's lagging. It's so laggy. There we go. There's the flare. That flare out on the sides. That's what happens at 45 degrees with quartz. Or maybe it's 42 and a half. Somewhere in there. All right, so we did that, but I got to do this. Um, 
hold on. We got to do this chocolate opal thing. I got I got some chocolate opal saw video to show you. This is Christina and Sun Ghost Squad's chocolate opal. We're actually going to show more of this video when I feature it, but it's a very short thing I wanted to do on this before we get to why did I buy that and the jokes so we can get to Sammy. This is the brown potch that's opaque and we can't see through it. And this is the area we can see through with the blue stuff in it. Yeah, look at how the blue is starting to come through because we separated it from the light. So we're, we're going to harvest that. And it's clear as a beer bottle. But then it has this fire on the back. This fire agate here. This is stuff that I really don't want to risk losing. And I really wish I could show on the microscope cam. There we go. Don't want to risk losing this. It has greens in it. It has yellows. It's, it's nice. So I'm trying not to polish too deep, but here's the problem. Check this out. As we follow it over... It goes down into this divot area and over to the potch. So I don't want to crack and break what could be a big surface if we could just find a way to follow this line and then out without ruining any of the black stuff or the fiery stuff. And uh, that's, that's what I'm kind of working on solving at the moment so doa cowboy i hope that kind of helps answer your question there is no chocolate opal in the 22 gemstones plant food but i've been saving the water i'm going to send it to uh twisted to put on some kind of a plant see if he, see if he wants to grow with the chocolate oat because it's safe i mean all the all the constituents in there but it's not it's not tested so um I don't actually want to like put it on the market or anything like that. It's just kind of an interesting interesting experiment we're going to get to. Man, I probably miss so many great chats. They do. That's why I wear the gloves, Stony. They do get dried out. My fingers dry out and uh that's why I wear the gloves originally is to keep that from happening. And it's not so much the water either cuz you know water, you know, water log them, but the the minerals will actually be rough and cut the skin and then it will it will callus up and so the gloves actually kind of help to prevent that a little bit multiple minerals or one stony so uh opal is actually it's it's a gap in limestone where quartz rich water has flowed and then it, it's basically glass that's set up it's natural glass Kind of like volcanic glass, but it's different because it cooled slowly. And then these diatomes go up in there and live, and that's what creates the opalescence. So it's glass with diatomes in it and the imperfections that make it uh, chocolatey. So I want to hurry up and get to the Whitfield Report portion. But first, we got to talk about why I buy that. I'm actually going to change the name of this. Like I was talking earlier, I'm working on SEO, right? Changing the, sh changing the show, I'm getting rid of my punctuation. First off, who uses punctuation, right? Not when you're in a hurry to search for something. So I'm getting rid of the punctuation, and uh, I thought it was a cute word, wide. Wide, because it's like, I say that. I've never written that word on paper, but I say it. Why'd that happen? Why'd I do that? Why did you do that? But I don't really say, why did you do that? I say, why'd you do that? Why'd you try that? Why'd you want to do that? Why'd I buy that? But I was thinking it might be a little easier to search for if I call it why I buy that. Because I'm telling you why I buy that. And this time, I bought Ritz crackers. I did. I bought the original Ritz crackers. They're easy. They're light. They're, they're, they're thin. If you take a whole sleeve of crackers, <clears throat> you crunch it all down into dust. It's a lot smaller than the size. So I get a lot of crunch and a lot of chew time. 
and there's a lot of salt on them. I gotta say, the original crackers, not the family pack, not the bulk pack. It has to be the original box, the the four the four thinner box. Lots of salt. I can I can I can sit there and put that on my tongue and rub my tongue around, and it's like it's sanding holes in my tongue so that I can absorb more of the salt. It's so salty, loving that salt. I've tried other crackers. There's all the other different ones. If I'm going to go with peanut butter, I'm actually going to shout out Perth Observer, and I'm going to actually put a little peanut butter on them. If I'm going to put cheese on them, I'll get, I'll get the canned cheese, and I'll spray me up some cheese on those crackers. I've tried the club crackers. They're all right, but the Ritz has more of a buttery, toasty flavor. And, uh, you know, they're not too expensive. I actually wound up getting them on sale. Uh, let's see. It's interesting. It was buy two, get three free. Sounds great, right? How about this? 60% off if you buy five of them. Not as great of a deal. So buy two, get three free. And that's why I buy that. Do you buy crackers? And why do you buy that? And, uh, let's see, mind blown. Oh, diatomes are alive. Well, they were, Stony, back when they were alive inside the opal. So, um, let's see, we are going to the salt off and rub two together. Oh, Stony, it's like, uh, Oreos. Ooh, we need to make an Oreo cookie. Why'd I buy it? We need to make cookies. Why'd I buy that? Yes, definitely. That with the white eye by that. Joke scene. Are we to that? Constant feed. Need for dust is mind-boggling. Farah. Oh, man. I have been wondering about Farah. I have been thinking. Because we have this gem right here that's for Farah. And I've, I've... got the the top design done i even have the bottom designed but i need to get my final polisher done because this piece of amethyst is just gorgeous it's got the grape it's got the purple it's got the blue and i tried cutting it by hand and this kind of goes back to what doa cowboy was asking me this side did not turn out the same as this side. And it's a very hard piece of crystal, so I'm putting it on the dop. But if I put it on the dop, I'll wind up getting scratches in it, which is why I'm hand polishing this one. But I don't want to hand polish such a nice piece. I want to get Farah something perfect. And she deserves it. Thank you for coming by, Farah. It's great to see you. We have an interview with the Whitfield Report, and we're going to be talking about driverless cars. Speaking of which, um, let's see. We need to get to the boring old joke portion where I don't have much this week, but I think I got a funny one. I bet I can make one of you laugh with one of the three decent jokes of this week's joke portion of the program. Okay, the way people are sanitizing everything, maybe we should just send everyone to the sanitarium. I'll sanitize everybody. I wanted to give a shout out to Rodney Dangerfield, but he's not supposed to get any respect. I don't want to ruin his act. What do you call a foot long sandwich with seafood on it? A submarine. What do you wear on a romantic date? Your thrusty undies. Do you think that Jesus ever had morning wood? Hey, I'm growing an ark down here. Maybe it should be, uh, Noah? I don't know. Working on these jokes. Fresh ones, right off of the br- Ah, I was talking to my wife. Uh, I, I asked my wife if she wanted to- Make whoopee. Okay, I was trying to think of a funnier word. We should go to the we should go to the funny words list. Okay, yeah, we're going with it. Thank you, Stony. I asked my wife if she wanted to make jiggly. She said no. She had a headache, and and so I said, you know, every time I ask about making jiggly, 
you say you have a headache. Does the thought of making jiggly give you a headache? And she said, no, talking to you does. But down. Uh, let's see. Oh, so the two non-doctors, right? So one of them made this funny joke, and I, I kind of bit surfed off of it. And so I wanted to give a shout out. Um, Maria Shahada, she said, uh, oops, I just spent four hours shopping for a stainless steel water bottle. And I said, uh, I, I bit surfed on it and I said, and then I spent another hour trying to find a lower price than $20. But don't, uh, let's see, almost done, I promise. And, uh, let's see, the fire department said to install smoke, de I, yeah, I heard an announcement to, s to install smoke detectors on every level of the house. So you know if someone's smoking without you. So I got the Bluetooth ones that are connected to the internet. Problem is, every time I light a doobie, the fire department comes over and smokes all my weed. Whoa. Alright, I'm going to finish with the driver's oath, which I think I kind of messed that one up. Alright. So, everyone needs to raise their right pedal and take the driver's oath to never pass a yellow light and a chance to burn out, to always pray for drive pavement, and to lobby for all stop lines to have sandpaper. So you can squeal away from the chain portion of the program guys are great thanks for putting up with that all right let's see if we can switch this over because uh, i wanted to do a who's talking about me now but i couldn't find the dog pounds episode where he said he was talking about me because he has an unboxing video of the gem that i sent him and we're going to interview the dog pound about the gem and we're going to show the video and it's going to be a feature but I couldn't find the video, so I can't do the episode of Huge Talking About Me Now. But what I can do is get to the interview. Let me see if I can pull up the great, the glorious, the Whitfield Report. Let me open up Zoom, which is going to require me to move my microphone and camera over. Please bear with me for these production quality assurances.
Mr. Downey, how are you doing? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Okay, maybe it's maybe it's designed to uh, handle both things. Let's see if uh, the chats can hear me. Okay, can you guys hear me in the chats? Can you hear Sam? Are we up and running? I don't think that anybody can see us, though, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the screen right now, and all I can see is a... Uh, a white square, and then our, our participants, right? E yeah, pretty much. I wonder if uh, Zoom and OBS don't agree. I actually, um, I wonder if it's having trouble rebroadcasting the video because I'm using a browser extension. Maybe I can use something else. Let's see, I have browser source. Um, maybe if I do like uh, media source capture. Yeah, yeah you. Go ahead. I'm using uh, Streamlabs OBS. Yeah, usually, um, usually media source works. And it says local file. Oh wait, wait. Uh, let me. Not like some technical difficulties. Let me see. Let me go. Let me go into my. Window capture. Yeah, yeah, it's it's window capture you want. Add new. Let's see, Zoom meeting. Capture method. There we go. Shablam. Now we are capturing like magic. All right, I can actually, I think I can do this. Let's let's try this. Yes. And there. With awesomeness. Hey. I even I, I filled in the title up there, the title the title card for you. Yeah, I saw that. Do you want to change that? I mean, now's the time. If you, if no, your your title card is uh, great. Okay, so. awesome. So, all right. As as long as everyone in the chats can hear us, see you now. Let's see, hear both. Awesome. Okay, let's make it happen. So, um, now I have a few questions for Sam, the Whitfield Report star of the Whitfield Report and the Whitfield Entertainment Network. And before we get to the actual deep questions, we want to get to know them a little bit. Sure. So, let me pull up my question, otherwise I will mess it up. Okay. Sam, if you won the lottery and you went for pizza, what would be your lottery pizza? Ah, uh, yes. The old lottery pizza question. Well, there's this uh, restaurant from uh there so i'm originally from denver colorado i live i live in florida now but there's this great uh pizza joint in denver called uh anthony's pizza mm. and uh the guy there is originally from uh brooklyn where you know so it's authentic new york style pizza but it's made in you know downtown denver, denver. Ingredient, ingredients go, gotcha go go figure 
So, but they make really good uh, New York style, you know, pizza. And if I if I won the lottery, I would uh, I would have a couple, you know, of those air mail air mailed down here. <laughs> or I would fly back to get a slice of one of those, you know, either or. So have it that air mailed be... to you and then fly back there while you're eating that one to get another one so that you can fly back and wait for the other one to be air mailed to catch you. Sure, why not? I mean, we're, we're talking about if I won the lottery, so... Well, why, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, and that's the point of what is your lottery pizza. Um, so what kind of toppings would you like on that? Um, you know, I'd like, uh, I'd like pepperoni. Um, you know, always a good standard. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things with, with, New, York, with New York style pizza is... I like to kind of fold mine up uh, with New York side pizza. You can do that. So I would want toppings that wouldn't necessarily like come off if you, if you do that. Um, and I also actually like, uh, I, I like, I'm not, I'm not one of the pineapple, you know, weirdos, but I am okay. one of the anchovy weirdos. I, I love anchovies on my pizza. So mm. I would definitely put, those on my pizza as have well. you ever had pepperoni with cheddar um i i actually i i have i i've had it with extra sharp white cheddar yes so. yes that's what i get extra sharp sliced cheese i quarter it and put that on the frozen tombstone before in the oven oh yeah that's man that is my lottery piece <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah um i i wanted to ask you about a couple of things before we really get into what you do on the whitfield report but to kind of give an idea of what you do with the whitfield report before we get to the driverless car questions uh would you like to promote yourself and uh kind of tell us what what you do at the whitfield report and the whitfield report network sure so uh the the whitfield report is a uh podcast that i've had it's it's undergone like several name changes over the years but when i mm -hmm. but when i started it i was roughly 14 <clears throat> and uh for a number of years it was called the whitfield analysis and i would analyze politics and current events and it was kind of that way for the first like five, six years of, of the podcast, strictly speaking. Uh, and then, you know, once I graduated high school and moved to Florida, um, I, I still do cover politics, but I changed the name to the Whitfield Report. And I also, uh, you know, I, I had been listening to Dennis Miller at that point for a few years and he not only covers politics, but he also covers a lot of entertainment and pop culture stuff. So I kind of figured, you know, people get sick of politics, you know, in and out, in and out every day. So why don't we change it up a bit? So mine's kind of a fusion of the two. If, if you like politics, pop culture, uh, occasionally I'll talk sports and then I'll interview people as well. Just like we're doing right now. And, uh, you know, I'm. It's kind of like it's kind of like a mix of, you know, pop culture, news, politics, entertainment, and a little bit of comedy too. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah, I, I mean, I actually know because I watch, but I, I wanted to kind of let you explain it for for the listeners and the the viewers and the chatters that we have. Uh, let's see if I have any. Um, great chats that i missed because i i was like tuned into what you were saying uh i mean you you talked about uh listening to dennis miller and we we talked to christian blatt of the blatt cast and that's the gem that we're cutting for him so um let's see uh they can see us they can hear us and jeanette says why not have the guy who makes them show up at your house makes what what are we making 
I missed oh, the oh, the pizza, I guess. Oh, that's a good idea. See, Jeanette, Jeanette is just on top of things. She understands the pizza question. Day yeah. And she, yeah she's... I mean, that, that, that would work in theory, but at the same time, I'm not sure if my kitchen is set up to, <laughs> uh, you know. Well, you'd have the lottery kitchen. So, yeah, you could just well, make yeah. the, the kitchen and then, uh, mm-hmm. That would work. She she knows she's on top of it. Oh yes, and I I wanted to um pin your YouTube link because I I I get going with the show and I forget these things. This is why I need a production crew. But I I do have YouTube administrator dropping a few of your links. Uh, let's see, dropped your YouTube link so that people can find you. And uh, let's see, I man show was actually running pretty close. I got to make sure I got your Twitter link too because I do not want to miss all these great opportunities cuz um we want to talk to you about gemstones and a little bit more about the Whitfield report actually, but I wanted to ask you some questions about driverless cars. So let's get to that awesomeness, shall we? Oh, sure. Oh, by the way, if people drop the hashtag wit or Whitfield report <laughs> All right, she's in the house. Hot Spira dog. is Spira is an old friend of the uh, of the Whitfield Report. I am so glad she made it. This is cool. Okay, so we're about to talk about driverless cars. I have three basic questions about driverless cars. And the first one is who is it who 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 is liable in the case of a fatal accident? Is it the company? Well, is it the insurance company? Is it the owner of the driverless car? I mean, technically I guess it would be the owner of the driver driverless car, but this is something they're actually trying to hash out right now mm -hmm. in um You know, in I don't want to say courts, but they are trying to hash that out in, uh, you know, I guess the legal system right now. So, I mean, I, I, I would hope I would hope it would be the driver. But, uh, you know, well, that that's the question, because if I buy a driverless car and then I set it to go home and then i fall asleep in the back seat and it kills somebody i mean would that make me liable but then again uh let's say i have to have insurance um and then the insurance company is going to need to protect themselves so they're going to want maintenance intervals so then would the liability fall on the maintenance shop because I, I don't think the maintenance shops could handle that kind of liability. I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think you can fall asleep actually with one of those things. Not yet. They're driver assistance systems and you have to be ready to take control. So it is still the driver's responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you can't fall asleep with, you know those things you you do have to you got you do have to awake which you know i mean i actually kind of like the idea deal of that i i i don't know do you really want to fall asleep with a uh you know do you really want to fall asleep in a in a driverless car well i want a teleporter i love the fantasy of just being able to boop and you're there i i driving is fun I really enjoy driving, which kind of takes me to my next question. As much as I want driver, driverless cars, if driverless cars are proven safer than driver-operated cars, and driverless cars are more prevalent over you know the years as they, they become used and handed down and more reliable will eventually someday possibly will driver operated cars go the way of the horse and only be owned by you know the wealthy 
because they're the only ones who can afford the insurance and most cars will be driverless and and driver operated cars will have to be something that people buy as a you know a sport oh well that's a that's a very interesting that that is an interesting question because right now it's kind of it's kind of the the opposite you know right mm-hmm. now it seems like only the only the rich are the ones with the driverless cars or i guess the driver assisted mm-hmm. cars and it, you know it's the opposite but say you know 10 15 years down the line they really perfect this stuff it it could very well be the opposite or 50 of, years yeah uh you know that mm-hmm. stuff so yeah it's got me wondering so that that kind of takes me to my last question if if there are driverless cars on the road that you know the the they they have you know 50 or even 7500 years down the road 100 years so let's say driverless cars are prevalent and driver operated cars are expensive and there's really only you know roadsters and such available how will that change policing well i mean ideally 100 years from now you know we could be li- we could be living in you know a star trek type world where uh you know people have, are living off world and whatnot elon you know musk will have already colonized mars and who knows you know they'll be colonizing some other place maybe uh but you know i i think in terms of cars i mean who who knows if we if we're going to be driving in a, in a hundred years we could just be you know going from place to place i i mean i certainly like the idea maybe of, of maybe of us having like flying cars like in uh like in blade runner mm-hmm. i don't know if you've seen that movie but uh you know they have those things i think they're called spinners that are something like flying cars so that so that's the next iteration Mm. they need to figure out how to make cars like you know fly or hover or do something so they certainly would be faster and most likely safer i could see that if if driver operated cars were drone cars then maybe that that would be a lot safer i wonder how much fuel it takes though because that's that's one of the things uh, that that I always go to when somebody talks about colonizing Mars is the cost of getting back off of Mars. We need a mine or fuel plant to, to make the fuel, the rocket fuel, to blast back off of Mars to get back home. And so I, I always wonder about you know col- as far as colonizing mars it well it also makes me wonder sam do you watch cowboy bebop uh i i i have watched it before yes it's a it's a, for those who are unfamiliar cowboy bebop is a it's one of those uh, japanese animation series where there's a bunch of action karate there's guns, there's spaceships, but the the basic idea with the premise is that humanity developed a gate system which allows us to travel in a spaceship, in cargo ships, from Earth to Mars to Jupiter and the moons that surround them. So we're kind of colonizing our way out into our own solar system a little bit, and the problems with governance and with fugitives have brought forth bounty hunters who are poor and always trying to find their next meal, which brings us to the the characters of the the show. And that makes me think of Sam talking about colonizing Mars. We're going to have to have governance issues and bounty hunters and dog in space. What are your thoughts, Sam? Uh, on dogs in space? No, t- dog the bounty hunter <laughs> in space. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think uh, 
Would you watch that? <laughs> I mean, if if Don if Don Giovanni Hunter is alive uh, by then, sure, I'll I will absolutely watch it. I'm I'm surprised. I'm surprised to be honest. He's alive now, so. Oh yeah, I I don't know. I I lost. I just remember a dog being the bounty hunter. Dog the bounty hunter. Um, is he still? Does is that real? Is that still a show? No, I I. It's been a while I don't, since I've watched television. The the thing that is is I I well I don't want to watch te- television either. I don't have cable, mm-hmm. but uh, every time every time I'm like out in public or I go to a friend's house that has cable. I, I think I think they made so many Dog the Bounty Hunter episodes they just rerun them, and mm-hmm. there there are so many of them that you know unless you unless you're like a diehard follower, you know you you can watch them often enough and it's like you get a new episode, mm-hmm. you know just because they recycle so much. Well, kind are, of like kind of like Law and Order. What so. are other great bounty hunters of history? Uh, I mean, I don't know anyone's, I don't know any like actual real life bounty hunters. I do know that, you know, I know that Clint Eastwood used to play bounty hunters in those old spaghetti Western. Do you think that bounty hunting will be a concern a hundred, 200 years from now, if we're colonizing other planets? I'm just kind of building out on the last question before we kind of round back to gemstones. Um, it's kind of hard to see that far into the future, but if we're going to be colonizing other planets, we're going to we're going to have governance issues. I kind of wonder about that. I suppose there'll probably be it'll probably be like the International Space Station, right? Just like an extension. Yeah, well, you know, I think I think at some point we'll we'll be getting uh, the United Federation of Planets mm. uh, out of out of Star Trek, and I I believe at some point our friend Christian Blatt will actually, uh, you know, head up that whole thing maybe because he's a he's a big Star Trek fan. Mm. I think that it'll be some sort of acronym that spells out Elon, like the earth league of nations um as it spreads about you know the the solar system but that was just kind of a thought sam uh let's talk for a moment about gemstones have you ever taken an interest in gemstones collected rocks or have they remained a mystery for your life no i I, it's actually funny that you asked that because i actually uh i don't really collect them much uh anymore but when i was a kid growing up my grandfather was big into gemstones um so i grew up with them and uh i had a very cool uh quartz collection uh for for years and years and years so when i found uh when i found your channel uh or rather when you found me, which I, I can't even, I can't even remember. That's, I know that you're the one interviewing me, but I can't even remember. How did you first find me? Was it because of, uh, was it because of Spire or because of Nirai? Or I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think I was looking for live streams and I found your, you were live and I saw that you, uh, didn't have too many people in the chats, so I thought maybe I could chat with you, and that's usually how I find people. And um, you interact with your chatters, which I thought was great, which I need to be doing, but I'm in the middle of an interview, so. Well, that that that's fine. I I'm 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 interacting with your uh, with your chat oh, while being you? interviewed. Um, <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate. You're doing so... a better job of producing my show than I am. Uh, Do DOA cowboy. There, there's no need to ban interest of stuff. He, he is a troll, but he's one of uh, my trolls. And uh, mm. you know, Chuck is Chuck's good people too, and and so is E Scorpio. Even though he's a he's a bit of a troll too, uh, but yeah. E Scorpions here for gemstones. 
Um, we're actually, we uh, already shaped Christian Blatt's gemstone, but we're talking to Sam about gemstones. Sam, what gemstone do you think interests you the most? Uh, I mean, I I like that uh, chocolate ruble that you've been sculpting. I always, I always tend to tune into your streams where you're working with that. So mm -hmm. interestingly enough, uh, you know, that's one that has kind of caught my interest because of your streams. Okay. Well, um, we're actually working that piece for Christina and Sun Go Squad, but it there's I have a little bit more chocolate opal, and so we can work a piece of that for you if you're interested. I actually was thinking that you'd pick something blue because you said you like blue. Uh, well, I, I well I do like uh, I do like blue stuff. So what blue what blue gems do you? Oh well, there's quite a few. So that made me think. Then what type of blue are you into? Like a, a rainy day blue, like a sea blue from the. Uh, the Caribbean or like a sea blue from the African sea or like a sea blue from uh, the Australian sea or like sea a sky. blue sea blue from uh, Australia. So okay, I yeah. also, I also like Navy blue, but I don't think they make, I don't think gems. Uh, I don't think God makes gems that are that blue. Necessarily. Navy blue. Hmm. Yeah, that is an interesting... I don't know if I have any shade that blue, but I have different shades of blue gems, and I'm wondering if a piece of iolite might work. Let me let me see oh, if I, I can pull oh, it. Oh, I, I love iolite. Okay, so I have some iolite kind of like this color of blue that's not really coming through. But uh, I'm thinking maybe we can shape a piece of iolite to try and get some of that that blue out of it. And I have a piece here, so maybe we can shape this one and uh, make it a feature and then uh, get that on our way to you, along with mm. a piece of some chocolate opal, which the thing about chocolate opal, before you know, I round up talking about that, is that I'm still learning how to process opal and shape it, so uh, that's why it's kind of going a little bit slow. Um, am I missing something? No, I think uh, I think that's pretty good. Okay. Um, actually, uh, before we go, I wanted to let you plug your uh, Whitfield Report again and the Whitfield Entertainment Network. So what do you have coming up on the Whitfield Report? Well, coming up on the, uh, on the Whitfield Report, I am actually uh, going to start doing a Tuesday podcast uh, podcast so another interesting thing about the uh about the show is i have two uh i have two episodes that are audio only uh one is on tuesday and one is on uh thursday and uh then i do the saturday live stream um so i'll be i'll probably be covering more of the uh you know stuff with george Floyd and that whole, you know, trial on Tuesday. Uh, Thursday, I'm going to be doing a long uh, awaited review of the Justice League Snyder Cut. Oh, okay. Uh, and that whole thing, I'm, I'm beginning what to What is talk. a Snyder Cut? Is it a cut that is more snide, more Dennis Miller than the rest? Well, I mean, that's what I that's what I would like to, to think of it 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 as really. Uh, actually, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I I recently learned from our friend Christian Blatt that Dennis Miller actually wrote a script uh, for Batman and Robin that was never used. Um, mm, wow! So Dennis wrote a Batman movie that would have that never saw the light of day and well, wouldn't uh, you like to get your lobes on that i i actually did get my uh hands on part of the script and it was uh it was very interesting needles say it was better than what we actually got in the late 90s oh, so i can only uh, imagine well, you know, what was great is having you on for an interview, and I could talk to you for hours, but I want to save a little bit for the next time. 
I'm hoping that I can get you to agree to an interview while you're in front of everyone. Sure, abs absolutely, man. I'm always happy to come on, and thanks for having me. I'd love, I'd love to have you on my show too sometime. Absolutely, so. Sam. You schedule it up. You know how to get in touch with me. We're gonna tell everyone to get in touch with Sam on SoundCloud, Twitter. You can type wit hashtag wit in the chat or hashtag Whitfield, uh, whichever you're feeling, and it'll drop his link. You can check him out and make sure to ring that bell on Saturdays because I missed my bell last night and I missed the show and I had to go back. And you guys were talking about some pretty deep stuff. So if you get a chance, check out Sam on the Whitfield Report on Saturdays and uh, Tuesdays and. Uh, and Thursdays as well. Thursdays as well. All right. Thanks for joining us, Sam. Bear with me, folks, at home while I get my production set up for the one-minute game of chess, and I can send you on your way. All righty. Okay, turn the audio down a little so I don't deafen you. Sam was great, wasn't he? It was great to get to know him. I got to get some more questions so we can... I, I could have talked to him for hours. That was a lot of fun. You know what we got to do, though, right now is get the chess portion up so we can play a one-minute game of chess, and then we can get you on your way. Nope, that's not how you do it. This is how you do it. By going to chess.com and click play. Of course, we got to highlight it so people can see. Chess, chess.com. Clicking on chess.com. It's not there. It's not that. Not going to sing about it anymore. There we go. Okay, chess.com. Let's play a one-minute game of live chess against someone in the world of similar skill. Aw, oh, man. Okay, boom. Oh, wow, somebody's there. No. Ah, what are we doing? Wait, is my, I'm supposed to go. Uh, giddy up. Yeah. This one. This one. That one. Uh, er, here. There. Mm, there. Uh, th uh, there. Um, there. Here. Here. Like that. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, uh, this thing. 
Wrong move, wrong move, wrong move. Oh, I should have done that. Uh, I should have pin, pin, pinched him. I could have taken that earlier. Uh, nope, can't do that. And, uh, giddy up. Oh, I won one. I actually won. Yay, I won. I won. That means I'm a winner. And, and so are all of you for coming by the show and hanging out and being a winner with me. You're all fantastic. I hope you all have a great week. Man, and Benny Loco made it. And everybody, you're all winners. Starshine, Chuck Boris, The Whitfield Report, you're all fantastic. I hope I see you again next week and every week at 9 p.m. Eastern. Have a great week, everyone.